Hey, you, you're listening to episode 114 of the Keto Diet Podcast. Today, we're chatting about when people shouldn't go keto just yet, the key to success on keto being in the mitochondria, what the mitochondria are, how they function, how we can support them, how they benefit the brain, heart, and muscle, and make your keto better, plus so much more. This topic means a lot to me because there are a lot of, I would say, biohackers in the space that are very focused on mitochondria and they go way elaborate with all the things we need to do to support our mitochondria and spend a lot of money and do all these things when it's as simple as using the sun. Dr. Lisa and I are going to be chatting about this plus so much more on today's episode. You can find the podcast extra and transcript by heading on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash podcast slash E114. I got one cool thing for you and that is a free guide on how to overcome carb cravings. You can get it by going to healthfulpursuit.com slash sugar. Okay, let's do this thing. Welcome to the Keto Diet Podcast, the show all about keto for women so you can burn fat, balance your hormones and heal your body. From television, print and billboard ads to social media and internet marketing, making you feel less than is a billion dollar industry. You won't find that here. And if you're struggling to make sense of the truth that you are so much more than good enough, I'd like to help. My 21 day whole keto challenge is open for registration. And as a listener of the show, you'll receive 20% off this daily coaching program with the coupon code keto now at checkout, go to healthfulpursuit.com slash whole use the code keto now for your 20% off whole keto complements your healthy keto lifestyle so you can repair your relationship with your body and start living your joy now. If you're new around these parts, I'm Leanne Vogel. You may know me as the international best-selling author of The Keto Diet, founder of HappyKetoBody.com, or maybe you know me as the nutritionist that likes dipping pork rinds in avocado oil mayo. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Thanks so much for listening. Our guest today is Dr. Lisa Saf Coach, who is triple boarded in internal medicine, bariatrics and anti-aging and regenerative medicine. Her own experiences with childhood leukemia and heart failure from chemo led her to focus on the cause of medical conditions rather than treating the symptoms. She is the medical director and founder of Spectra Wellness Solutions, a comprehensive clinic focusing on all aspects needed for total body healing, including the ketogenic diet, hormone replacement therapies and enhancing mitochondrial function. She has built a team of gifted healers that work together to create individualized treatment plans. She has several signature programs for optimal performance, including the Ignite program featured in her first book, Get Lit. Dr. Coach has lectured nationally and has been featured on numerous radio and TV segments. Dr. Coach is an amazing human, and I am so excited to have her on the podcast. She is also an expert in our Happy Keto Body program, which is launching again in January. You can find out more about Happy Keto Body and enter your email address and first name so that you don't miss the launch by going to happyketobody.com. Okay, let's cut over to this interview. Hey, Lisa, how's it going? Great. Thanks Great so to much. be here. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, it's been a blast. Well, so we met online when I was developing Happy Keto Body and you ended up coming on the program and teaching us all the things about therapies. And it's, it's such a great interview and I've watched it a couple of times. And I, you're probably the only human I've seen multiple times since we went nomad. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm lucky. <laughs> You're so lucky. Yeah, it's just, it always works out that we're just like in the Tampa area. <laughs> yeah, Tampa has that kind of energy. We like to draw everybody in. Oh, I miss it so much. I can't wait to go back. It's very different than where we're at currently. <laughs> yes, well, we're ready when you are. <laughs> Amazing. So before we dive in, I like to ask every, every one of our guests what keto means to them. What does keto mean to you? Keto to me was the missing piece. That's how I would love to describe it. I spent, I've spent my whole career sort of looking for that piece of what I was eating to kind of fit in to everything else I was doing in terms of optimizing and trying to heal myself and optimizing performance for my patients. 
And keto brought that missing piece. And how does it, how does keto fit into your clinical practice? Like how do you weave that in with your clients and what is that practice like for you? So for my practice, I'm constantly focusing on optimizing function as well as I can. So I'll take the patient wherever they are, try to get them up several levels. If they're really sick, try to clean them up, get them off of meds and get them feeling better. If they're already doing well, try to get them that extra edge that, the, that everybody is looking for. So what I found in the past four to five years that I've been playing with the benefits of the ketogenic diet is that wherever people are, it can help them get to that next level. So I'll weave it in when they're ready. Sometimes at the beginning, they're just too sick and overwhelmed and we've got to get their gut healed and we've got to balance things before we can dabble into really addressing their you know, eating habits. I'll, I may just pull out gluten or just pull out sugar. I've got to step them along. But the goal is always when we get them cleaned up enough and mentally stable enough to, to really dabble in what the benefits of the ketogenic diet can do for their personal health. I love that you said you meet your clients where they are because I just, and I know this about you and I feel like a good a good therapist or anyone that's working with human beings needs to understand that they need to meet their clients where they are. And I was having a conversation with a woman that was diagnosed with diabetes type one when she was three years old and the struggle that she had of doctors not meeting her where she was (laughs) constantly for years and years and years. And I think so many of us too find the ketogenic diet and then we're like, okay, this is the magic ticket. And we start down this road and it's like, we're so sick, we can't get the benefits of keto just yet. Would you agree that some people just need to do some healing before? Oh, absolutely. And you know, our practice is is pretty focused on finding all of those different things and helping patients to heal them. But when I first started implementing keto in a 12-week program and watching the patients go through it, it became pretty clear to me that it really does require some finesse, um, some individualization. Not everybody really could handle it from a stress perspective. And I, and then it, it took some evaluation prior to referring people into it after that point, once I saw how some people were really struggling. Back to today's episode in a sec. You want to talk about fasting for a little bit? Yeah. I mean, when I was vegan, a juice fast was a very normal thing that I did probably once a month for a day or so. And then maybe I would do like an epic juice fast for like five to seven days every three months. And I really thought I was doing well by my body. I would lose weight. I would feel better. My skin would clear up. I would get rid of bloat. And I thought I was doing so good. But turns out that fasting is a really big issue. And the major problem is, is that it undermines a lot of the benefits of fasting. And if you've been eating keto for a while, you know exactly what the problem is. Because what ends up happening when you're drinking all that fruit or veggie or both kind of juice, you spike your body with a ton of glucose first thing in the morning. So you're taking in all the sugar which increases your insulin, which screws up your cortisol and your hormones get all wonky. So all day while you're not eating, your body is scrambling to deal with insulin that got dumped into your bloodstream from that juice you drank. So maybe you did a ton of juice fast in the past and now you're keto and you're like, what do I do to keep up that sort of behavior? And you might have started uh, doing intermittent fasting and that's awesome, but you might not be feeling that's enough. And that's where bone broth can hold a really nice place in your ketogenic diet, whether you use it as a day fast, a multi-day fast, if you're into that sort of thing, definitely check with your doctor before trying, or you use it to extend your fasting period. So if you're an intermittent faster and you're just having a difficult time getting over the hump of fasting, you can always enjoy a little bit of broth throughout the day. There's no sugar at all. There's nothing in bone broth that can spike your insulin to any significant degree. Instead, you'll be topping up your body with 10 grams of protein and collagen, plus trace nutrients from bones and organic veggies they got simmered in. Your body will digest bone broth very quickly, and then it'll have all the energy it needs to heal you during your fast, which is the whole point of fasting is to just 
heal our bodies. It's really simple. You just cook the broth on the stove for two to three minutes. You can also use a microwave. It's not totally horrible. Pour it into a mug and drink it like it's a cup of coffee, only without all the jittery shake jitter jitters. If you want to try bone broth for yourself, I highly recommend Kettle and Fire. You can head on over to kettleandfire.com slash keto podcast. Get an instant 15% off discount on six cartons or more, or just head on over to Kettle and Fire. Use the coupon code keto podcast and get that 15% off. It also includes free shipping, whether you use the URL or the coupon code. And I'm just really stoked to share it with you. It's a practice that I've had for a couple of years. I think you may love it. So again, it's kettleandfire.com slash keto podcast to get 15% off Kettle and Fire when you order six cartons or more and it includes free shipping. Okay, back to today's episode. What do you notice like with your 12 week program when you're taking women through it? We've had this conversation, just the two of us. What do you notice with your clients as they flow through this 12 week program? So what I would find often, and again, you have to understand that most of the people that are I'm dealing with in my practice have already paid attention to their gut and their hormones and their thyroid to a certain degree. So it's a little bit of a self-selected population that are, are more ready to go through keto. But even with those patients, a lot of them would do amazingly well for about six to eight weeks. And then we would hit some struggles at that point where they may get tired again, or they would pop out of ketosis, or they would feel like their hormones were off, or maybe almost like they got a bug or their immune system was down. So I had to dig deeper and try to find some of the answers there. And it, it, it's fairly multifactorial. So, you know, in, in, in every individual patient, sometimes it was significant electrolyte deficiencies. Sometimes it was micronutrient deficiencies. Sometimes it was just poor education in the exact types of foods that should be eating, eaten on a ketogenic diet, which you are so amazing at addressing with your people. Yeah. Um, But that was definitely happening because there's a lot of the mixed information out there. So trying to kind of go through and and figure out for each person where they may be getting stuck was a challenge. Mm, And I know a lot of women listening right now are like, what? Dr. Lisa is a doctor and she understands keto and she (laughs) respects the female body and how we relate differently to different changes in our diet. And they might be feeling really frustrated with like, but how do I find a doctor? You know, I I'm really far away from Tampa and she sounds amazing. How do I find a doctor? Um, so we're actually going to be chatting about that in our little 10 minute clip that we'll put together for our keto unlimited members. Cause I think it's so important that people feel supported in their health and wellness plan and that the doctors, and I'd love to focus on this next of are constantly learning, you know, like that's what I love about you is every time I talk to you, you're, you're on a totally different thing. And you're like, I've done so much research on this. I had no idea. And it's just so inspiring and encouraging, not only for me as a practitioner, but also I'm sure for your clients to, to feel like they're being loved and cared for because you're so passionate at what you do. So what's like the therapy that has you all lit up right now? Because I know it's totally different. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, I'm excited to talk about the, how to find a practitioner and how to feel supported piece. So just really quick, I'd love to comment on that, which is that, you know, a lot of people that are not practitioners or physicians that are in this space, do get a lot of, make a lot of comments about how, you know, doctors are, are the problem. And I, I would love to just say for a second, it, it very well may be in your particular case, but that's not what physicians go, like, that's not why we go to medical school. <laughs> you know, the problem is more in the education itself where we're not taught these things and, and we are sort of forced to learn this on our own. So I think my own personal passion, I, I've been very gifted in that my biggest adversities have been, you know, my gifts where I have been gifted with illness since the young age of 15. So starting with leukemia and then with heart failure from chemo, Hashimoto's psoriasis, sinus problems, delivering my second baby under general anesthesia, um, you know, it just doesn't stop. So that's kind of what's caused me to continue to pursue 
what I like to describe as the why, you know, um, I went through school asking why. And so right now, if the thing that's got me most excited is evaluating the role that mitochondrial function is playing in every, every disease. And I find it funny because I've since I've trained in integrative medicine over the past 15 years, you know, we focus so much on things, on all the systems, the adrenals, the thyroid, your hormones, and nobody has talked about the mitochondria until maybe, maybe the past five years, I would say, wouldn't you agree? I mean, it's not been out there. Yeah. Yeah. Like in school 10 years ago, we chatted a little bit about it, but just that it existed, but not that we could do anything about it. And then when I found keto, a lot of the stuff I was reading was, was saying that it was improving mitochondrial function, but didn't really also get into it. So yeah, I would agree. I would definitely agree. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you ask me what really launched me on the ketogenic path, it's what still has me passionate to, you know, right now, which is hearing a talk with Dom D'Agostino and Dr. Mercola where they mention the ability of the ketogenic diet to trigger mitochondrial, not only improved mitochondrial function, but mitochondrial biogenesis, which literally means you can make new mitochondria. So, you know, if people don't know what mitochondria are, they are these small organelles that are inside of our cells that produce ATP, which is energy. And we have, I always thought, and hey, I went to a great medical school, <laughs> that you were given mitochondria, and then if you trash them with chemo or processed food or whatever else, environmental toxins, they were gone. And when I said the missing piece at the beginning of our chat here, you know, here was something that was actually a diet, the way you were eating, and it could make brand new mitochondria while well, I was in, you know, immediately at that point. I hope you're totally digging this episode. I love putting these together every week and I hope you're getting something out of it. I love seeing where you're listening from. So next time you're listening or even right now, take a picture of yourself watching the show or a screenshot of your favorite episode and tag me on Instagram at healthful pursuit. And if social isn't your thing, that's totally fine. Just jump on your favorite podcast player and leave a review for the show. Okay, back to the good stuff. Would you say that that's, like you said, that missing piece, would you say that we've downplayed the role of mitochondria in our overall health and wellness? And do you feel like by focusing on that, we could upregulate our, our plan? Absolutely. I think, you know, I don't know about everybody listening, but I learned about the mitochondria in like ninth grade biology. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and it's pretty funny because my daughter had me quiz her and I'm trying to like remember all this stuff about mitochondria. And we're looking at the pictures and they, and they had it compared to a plant and the plant uses photosynthesis and has something called the chloroplast. And the chloroplast looks exactly like our mitochondria. And so now they're finally people making these connections. And hey, maybe there are some other things that we need and maybe these organelles are more important than we've given them credit for. If we're on the constant search for optimizing performance and function and energy, you know, we're, we've been so focused on our adrenals and our thyroid and our hormones and our gut, which I am not trying to um, say are not important because they truly are. Maybe the gland or the organelle that actually makes the energy should also be on that list. And so let's just say that our mitochondria is lacking in, in love and we want to do some certain therapies, which we'll chat about in a second about how to support our mito mitochondria. But let's say we go from zero to 50 where our our mitochondria is on fire. What can we expect? Like people might be thinking, okay, woohoo, mitochondria. That's just one more thing I need to stress about. But what can we expect by um, taking care of the mitochondria? What are the sorts of results that you've seen in your practice or even with yourself? Okay, absolutely. Awesome question. So the mitochondria are more heavily concentrated in a handful of our organs. The brain is probably number one, your heart and muscle and things like the eye and even the ovary, which is really interesting for the women that are listening from a fertility standpoint. So, you know, for my own personal journey, I, when you deal with chemo-induced heart failure, that is literally a direct 
toxicity going after your mitochondria in your heart. So I have had significant benefit in cardiovascular function with utilizing the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting to a certain degree over the past five years. And I'm, I'm definitely more of a cyclical keto eater um, just because my body needed that TLC of not constantly staying in ketosis. But I see a lot of benefits with focus, with brain function in general, sort of improved clarity and proved mental just power, definitely energy, which can come from the cardiovascular support of the mitochondria. I have seen, I can't say directly fertility benefits, but the research is there in that really going after that, which is something I've been more recently focusing on, can improve ovarian function and potentially help with everything from hormonal issues to fertility and potentially, you know, vision as well. So lots of really great benefits. And when you look at ATP production, energy production, we're now stepping back and saying maybe a lot of these diseases, everything from diabetes to Alzheimer's that we've been focusing on just sugar slash dietary issues as being the cause, maybe the underlying cause is actually dysfunction in our mitochondria, which does happen from eating really high carb diets. That is unreal. I know when you first told me that, I was like, what? And I had to go back <laughs> to the drawing board with a lot of my my processes in my brain of how things work. So if if we want to improve our mitochondria, is there a way to determine whether or not our mitochondria needs support? Okay, so that is also an awesome question. You're always right on point. There are not a lot of easy, quick ways to test, like blood tests. There is a organic acid urine test. It's quite expensive. So I'm, I'm on the hunt to try to develop a way to easily test for it. Right now, what I would say for your listeners is if you are tired, if you feel better on keto, if you feel like you used to have an edge and it's going down a bit, you can assume safely that you could use mitochondrial support. Okay, that's fair. Back to today's episode in a sec. Did you know it's possible to enjoy a glass or two of wine and stay in ketosis? Yeah, that's right. Dry Farm Wines is the first wine club that sources wines with zero sugar, so you can drink your wine and not compromise your ketones. Plus, Dry Farm Wines curates only the highest quality natural wines from small, sustainable family farms. Their wines are organic, dry farmed, and naturally low in alcohol with zero additives and zero carbs. Listeners of the podcast can add an extra bottle of wine to their first Dry Farm Wines order for just one penny sign up for your first case now by going to healthfulpursuit.com slash wine unsure of the link simply check out the show notes of today's episode to get all the details okay back to today's episode so how do we how do we support it i know that you and i have chatted a lot about the sun and its yeah. role in supporting the mitochondria but um i'll let you take it away <laughs> Okay, so there are a lot of supplements that are known to be specifically helpful for mitochondrial function. And especially in people on the ketogenic diet, you want to make sure that you're supplementing things like L-carnitine, which can help shuttle the good fats you're eating and utilize them inside the mitochondria as fuel. Coenzyme Q10, which has you know, been around and actually just a really quick cool story is that when I first went into heart failure at age 20 and knew nothing about integrative medicine, my uncle, who was a podiatrist at the time, sent me, and this was a good 20 years ago, um, sent me CoQ10 and carnitine in the mail. I had no idea what they were, um, took these supplements and you know I got better and they just kept coming magically in the mail when I ran out of the bottle. So to this day, I've got so much gratitude um, you know, for that foresight of like 20 years ahead of its time. But those today are still the top two 
supplements that anyone looking to optimize mitochondrial function should really be looking at. There's a couple of blends, um, some specific ones that are made as almost like a multivitamin that are focused more towards mitochondrial improvement. So, you know, we can chat about brands and things if you would like, but I also have recently found a CoQ10 that they put a char electron charge on that helps it drive deeper into the mitochondria. And I'm seeing phenomenal benefits with my patients from an energy perspective. Perspective. So supplements, definitely a possibility. Obviously, what you're eating, and that's your sweet spot, but the ketogenic diet, we know, runs cleaner mitochondrial function. So less free radicals or stress on the body inside the mitochondria when you're using fat for fuel instead of carbohydrates. And then the, the rest of the field is moving literally at the speed of light. So um, when we talk about what some of the exciting things that are coming out every day, um, what we found is that there are receptors in our mitochondria for light. There are receptors potentially for other energy sources. All, we think even thoughts, and that's really hard to prove. So you know, we'll see what the science comes out in terms of supporting those abstract ideas as we move forward. But Right now, there this benefit of utilizing the sun is something that's really going to be awesome for your listeners because it's free. It only takes about 10 minutes. It makes common sense. So when I was quizzing my daughter and she shows me the chloroplast and it looks just like the mitochondria, I kind of filed it away, scratched my head and said, now that's weird. Yeah. But I didn't know what to make of it. Well, I have since found you know, there's a neurosurgeon in New Orleans who's very passionate about making this connection. Um, his name is Dr. Jack Cruz, if anybody ends up wanting to listen to him. But he talks about how you can connect to the sun and that there is a huge deficit in ATP production in our mitochondria that nobody has accounted for. So as I started looking this up a little bit more, it turns out that we, you know, the rays of the sun, especially early in the morning, are very beneficial to several different pathways, but it all goes back to the mitochondria in our body. And the pathways, the sun rays need to enter through your retina. So you have to take your glasses off or try to get outside you know, without contacts on. And if your listeners can just put their bare feet in the earth, so grounding, which also has a fair amount of research coming out more and more every day. So bare feet in the earth, or there's just go ahead and sit down and gaze, not at the sun directly, but off about 10 degrees, obviously. You want to do this before 10 a.m. if possible. And let those rays get into your retina. They're, they seem to be activating pathways that can help, again, with mitochondrial biogenesis, ATP production, really, really interesting things that have not been fully delineated yet and need more research. But when it's free, easy, 10 minutes, a great time for reflection and gratitude, then why not go for it? Yes. And after you told me this, just an FYI, um, we flew back to Vegas because our RV was in Vegas and I started doing a 15 minute yoga practice outside before 10 a.m. And I just, I, I guess it's been, when did I see you last? Maybe two months. Yes. So I guess it's been about two months that I've just been doing it every morning. It's so easy and my energy is a lot better. My thoughts are clear and it's also just really nice to sit outside and do some movement. And it's not even, I don't use an app or anything for the yoga. I just like move, however, <laughs> like, yeah, just which moving is awesome because you're connected. And I think, you know, there are a lot of people now also talking about the dangers of all of the Wi-Fi, EMFs, blue light, fluorescent light. And I always choose in my career and practice to focus on the positive instead of the doom and gloom. And if we can optimize mitochondrial function, I, you know, it seems like these EMFs and frequencies are probably affecting us through our mitochondria. If we can make more and keep them healthy and go back to what we're, we're, what we're supposed to be, which is more like a plant, we need the earth, you know, we need the sun, we need to be talked to nicely. And water. <laughs> 
and we need water. That was, yeah, that was the last one. So if we can just view ourselves and maybe, you know, like you said, you're just free flowing in your yoga moves. The plant just hangs out in the, in the dirt, you know, flowing in the wind. I think that 10 minutes of reconnecting to our essence, the beauty of this is it may be connecting a bit of this being present spirituality to actual scientific proof that it's working through our mitochondria. Yeah. And you're so good at merging those two worlds together. It's, it's unreal how well you are at doing that. So let's chat about your book because it, it does such a great job at merging those two worlds together. So take it away. Why did okay. you write it? What's it about? Um, what have you seen so far? Awesome. So it's always been a passion of mine to try to share my experiences on my personal journey and my knowledge of working with you know, over 6,000 patients just today in my practice, but 15 to 15 years of integrative medicine, um, to be able to share it on a much bigger scale. And I'm very excited that I'm finally starting to do this with the help of wonderful podcasters like my dear friend Leanne here. Um, but also he wanted to write a book so that people could have an easy and simple guide that was really my primary goal in writing it. I had the support of an amazing healer who has a ton of nutritional knowledge. He was working for one of the main nutraceutical companies at the time and just came in and said to me, you have too much amazing things that you're doing and things going on in this practice. Let's write up, you know, you need to write a book. And when I said, I, I don't have time, I can't pee, and I have a two-year-old and a, a full practice, he said, I'm going to help you. So it was his idea to do this in a question and answer format, and he has a radio show in LA, which is pretty cool at this point. But we went through trying to compare how a person in their day-to-day -day life could look at their body more like an how an athlete looks at their body. So how do we optimize this gift, this body, that vessel that we've been given on every level, but in a non-overwhelming way, in an easy way with, you know, something that's not going to take me, you know, a month to read and have to take sticky notes. And so we made it pretty simplified. It's in three sections, body, fuel, and mind. The body section, you can kind of flip through. There's question and answers. If you know you have a thyroid problem, if you know you have a gut issue, I touch on the top things that have helped my patients. So some of the, the ones you haven't heard of, which are upper cervical chiropractic, which is an adjustment using a sound wave and how you may be able to find a practitioner in your area. So you can kind of flip through the body piece, the fuel piece. I wanted to find a way because I'm not a great cook and I'm you know multitasking like most of your listeners um, to kind of simplify all the information out there in the keto slash paleo slash world. And I turned it into a non-recipe because my I kept hiring nutritionists and my good friend and I finally just looked at each other and said, nobody really like they may want to do some of the recipes and I save when I'm ready to do that. I pull out, you know, your book for sure. Oh, <laughs> but they thanks. may want to just, <laughs> they just want to grab something here, there and everywhere. And can we make this simple? So I kind of took all of the reference books and turned it into a turnkey, two main principles, serving size. I mean, portions instead of, um, you know, really measuring out macros uh, other than the carbs and made a turnkey easy section on the fuel. And then the mind piece, which is, you know, something that is one of my main passions of trying to help people get into personal empowerment and making them self-aware. So that also is simple. And what I've done is created a scale where patients can find where they currently are in terms of personal empowerment slash self-care and giving them simple tools to kind of get to the next level without being overwhelmed. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people realize that even like cookbook authors like myself, I don't actually make recipes except for when I'm writing a book. <laughs> like I don't. And, you know, there's certain concepts like you know, I can blend cashews in a blender with water and use that as a base for, for sauces. So now I know that this concept exists and I'll use it again, but I might not use the same spices that I did when I followed the recipe. So that's what I like about your book. It's just like, here are the concepts and now you can, you know, 
as an example, use that cashew blended stuff in this and this and this and this, and this is how you can use it. So you have this one strategy that you're using multiple ways to make multiple different types of meals. And that's how I eat. I'm not fancy and Kevin hates that because especially when I'm writing a book or I'm working on recipes with a blog or a partner or something, he's like, this is so good, but I know I'm never going to get it again. And he's right because who has time for that? Really? It's all about just like, oh, I can use cauliflower in that way. Cool. Filing that away and then using it in different ways, but a lot simpler. So I think it's so important to be realistic with the way that we're the way that we're eating. And your book is so great. And what I like about it is the question and answer, the way you respond is exactly the way that you talk in real life. So you really feel that energy come through in the words, which I really like, because I think sometimes we can get into writing books, and then our voice is kind of taken away from it. And it loses that magic that is the author itself. So you did a great job at keeping that voice alive in the pages. Well, thank you. And I I think, you know, when you mentioned the thing about the recipes, just real quick, I, I think it also plugs into empowerment again, because, you know, then you can say, I'm too busy, I'm going to take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, this is my day to day life. But hey, it's date night. And you know, I think I'm just in the mood, let's just cook together and make one of these really cool recipes, it becomes, it can become something that's fun instead of, oh my God, every day I have to find a recipe and a way to make this work. So that was really the point of, of putting that in the fuel pages and, and the mind piece as well of, you know, what works for me in a really simple manner that people can start tomorrow. And it was an interesting time period between doing the question and answer section and really finalizing my program that comes with the book because I was testing it on people and on myself and I kept changing it (laughs) because it wasn't quite there. So it was very exciting when I finally was able to put it all together and um, we're gonna, you know, we've got a program kit that comes with it with a lot of tools that'll continue to make it easy for people to get started. Cool, and where can people find your book? And I'll include these links in the show notes too, but. Okay, awesome. So our website is um, www.spectrawellness.com and there's a link on the website. Um, You can also find the book on Amazon, um, Get Lit, and you'll you'll be able to order it right there. And then um, our social media pages, I'm not sure have the book directly on them, but they would link us, link you back to the website. Cool. Okay. We'll include this in the show notes. Um, And my last question to you is, what do you think is missing in the keto space right now for women? So I would say more of the self-love for sure. I think you have done a great job with that, but I think we need more Um, balance, letting women know that they don't have to be everything all of the time. (laughs) Um, So trying to help them not be so hard on themselves and, you know, doing that with the empowerment of how much better you feel on a ketogenic diet. I think it's a perfect platform for women to feel better and then to take it to the next step of spreading that balance empowerment piece. I couldn't agree with you more. Having women lit up to the fact that they can take care of themselves and not be everything to everyone, it really spreads like wildfire in their group of friends, which then spreads even further. And I I totally agree that that's that's the key and what's really missing. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show, Dr. Lisa. This was really great as always. Thank you for having me. And I will include all the links um, that Dr. Lisa mentioned, including her book and everything over at healthfulpursuit.com slash podcast slash E114. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. 
The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.